Here's how to replace the lower control arm on a Honda Accord. First thing we're going to do is jack up the vehicle and remove the wheel. This Honda uses double wishbone front suspension, so what that means is there's an upper control arm here, the steering knuckle, your strut and spring assembly, and then the lower control arm down here, which is connected to the strut here as well as the steering knuckle via the lower ball joint. Now normally when cars get high mileage, these lower control arm bushings start to crack as you can see here. That can cause a number of problems from tire wear issues to vibration problems when driving down the highway. To remove the lower control arm down there, we need to remove this fork for the suspension as well as the stabilizer linkage and this bolt here with the bushing in it where it bolts to the frame and this bolt here that holds the bushing up front as well as this nut for the blower ball joint where it connects to the steering knuckle so we're going to start with this 14 millimeter bolt that holds the strut onto the fork and then we're going to take out this 17 millimeter nut that holds the fork onto the control arm you might need to hold the other side with a wrench and i'm just going to remove the bolt like that. Alright, now I'm going to pull out the suspension fork away from the strut. And once that's loose, I can remove it from the vehicle. So this part is probably the hardest part of this job, and that is the stabilizer link. These things are notorious for getting rusted on, so I'm going to spray it down with a little bit of penetrating fluid. Now normally you get these off by using an internal hex to hold the ball stud straight. Well, you get a wrench on here and turn this off. But as you can see, my hex is stripped out. So we're gonna have to figure out another way to hold that ball stud. Alright, we're gonna try to whip it off with my impact gun. Alright, so next I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips and get it on here to hold the ball stud straight. This might damage the boot. Okay, we're gonna try to whip this off with the vice grips on there. Okay, I got a bigger pair of vice grips on it. I'm gonna give it another shot. Looks like I busted the stabilizer linkage. You can see that this stabilizer linkage is just a plastic bearing and it was loose and the grease is all dried up so you can see it was pretty much due for a change anyways. Next we need to remove the lower ball joint connection from the control arm. To do that we're going to first start by removing the cotter pin at the bottom here and that's it. Next I'm going to use my 17 millimeter socket and take off the castle nut for the lower ball joint. Next we need to separate this lower ball joint from the control arm. To do that, we're going to install the castle nut halfway and use a ball joint separator. It's basically got a fork on it over here and a tongue on the bottom here. Now a fork goes into the ball joint like that and the tongue catches onto the castle nut down at the bottom. Then you tighten up this big nut here and that separates the ball joint. Okay, I've got my ball joint separator onto the ball joint. I'm going to tighten up this 24 millimeter bolt here and the ball joint should pop free. That's it, it's pop free. Now I can remove the castle nut and you'll see that the lower control arm is now free from the ball joint and I can remove it. Okay, next we're going to remove this 17 millimeter bolt that holds the control arm to the frame. These can get very stuck so make sure you soak them in penetrating fluid. The sleeve could also get stuck onto the bolt and just spin there. In that case you're going to have to cut the bolt off and press the bushing out. You'll find that moving the stabilizer bar out of the way if you've got the other side disconnected gives me enough room to get in here with my 17 millimeter bolt and wobbly socket. Okay, here we go. Finally, we're going to remove this 19 millimeter bolt that goes through this bushing and into the frame here. Again, these can get very stuck, so you might want to put some penetrating fluid and let it soak, or use a big breaker bar to break it free if the impact doesn't work. Okay, with all the bolts free from the frame and from the ball joint, I'm going to go ahead and wiggle out the control arm. Here's the whole control arm removed from the vehicle. This here is the stabilizer link that we broke. It's a good time to cut this off now and replace it with a new one. This here is the bushing where the strut bolts up to. You can see there's a bit of a crack underneath. This here is the rear bushing. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. And this here is the front bushing. And it's not too bad either. Now if you are changing the bushings on these, you're going to have to take them to a shop and have them pressed out and press in the new bushings. However, you can buy control arms that are preloaded with new bushings and replace the whole thing. I'm going to be using a rotary tool with a cutoff reel to take off this old stabilizer from the control arm. Yeah, the Dremel's too slow, I'm going to call in the big guns now. That's it, there's the stabilizer. Make it easier to put the new control arm in. I'm just going to put a scissor jack underneath the hub to support its weight. So here I've got the new control arm, I'm going to put it in. I'll first insert the bushing at the back. And then the front bushing. 
and just slide that in. I always like using a little bit of anti-seize on the bolts before putting them in, especially chassis bolts that tend to get rusty and really hard to get out. Okay, next I'm going to replace the 19 millimeter bolt that came out from underneath the chassis here. And I'm going to tighten that down with my impact. And next I'm going to line up the rear bolt of the control arm onto the frame. And install this bolt. Okay, I've got my impact on the wobbly socket. I'm going to tighten this guy down. Next, before you put the lower ball joint on, you want to make sure that you don't maneuver the steering knuckle and pull it out too much. That'll pull out the inner CV boot, like what I did. So I'm going to lift the steering knuckle and guide the lower ball joint into the control arm. Next, I'm going to install the castle on the lower ball joint. And then I'm going to use my 17 millimeter socket and tighten it up. Now, if this castle tends to spin because the ball cone isn't seated in the lower control arm, you can jack this side of the control arm up to give it some pressure and then it will turn in. Next I'm going to replace the cotter pin. Now this part's optional, I'm just going to replace the brake caliper. I removed it to get a better sight line of the lower ball joint. Okay, next we're going to replace the suspension fork. I'm just going to tie it around the axle and position it back up on the strut. Then I'm going to replace the bolt for the suspension fork. Make sure you use a lot of anti-seize on this one because it tends to get very rusty. I'm going to tighten this up. Then I'm going to replace the bolt for the bottom of the suspension fork. I'm going to line it up with the lower control arm bushing and wiggle it in. Then on the other side, I'm going to replace the 17 millimeter nut. All right, while using a pliers on the other side, I'm going to tighten this bolt down. One thing I learned is that you don't use an impact to tighten the bushing too much because the bushing's rubber will just absorb the impact. Finally, once all the suspension components are tight and checked over, we're going to replace the wheel. Finally, we're going to take the car for a test drive. And although we didn't remove any components that are adjustable, it's always a good idea to take the car for an alignment. By the way, these broken stabilizer linkages, you don't need them. It's just a family sedan.